Well hi there, welcome to Paint and Zoo. My name's Matt. We've got an amazing collection of skulls here at Paint and Zoo and I thought you might like to see some of them today. And I, I know some of you are going to be in school and some of you are going to be learning from home. But we're going to have a little look at the skulls. We're then going to go and see some of our amazing animals here at Paint and Zoo. And then we're going to have a chat about what they eat here and in the wild and how you build a food chain. So let's start with a skull, but not this one. We're going to come back to this one in just a second. Now the first skull we're going to look at today is a human skull. This is a model of a skull. Okay, it's not my own skull, don't worry, but this is a model of a human skull and it shows us what the bones are like inside our heads. If you looked inside my head, these are the shape of the bones that you would see there. Now the skull does a number of things. First of all, it protects our brain. Our brain is right inside our head and the skull helps to keep that part of us safe. Now it also gives a little bit of shape to our face and that keeps things like our eyes pointed in the right direction and our ears where they need to be and it import importantly allows muscles to move so muscles like the ones that open and close our jaw okay that are important for us to eat our food okay the skull gives an anchor for those to work now we're going to start looking at some animal skulls but i wanted to show you this one first so that you know what what a skull looks like for us now let's look at a different skull so the first skull we're going to look at is this one here. I've chosen a big cool one to start with. Now this is the skull of an animal that we have here at the zoo. Now I want you to try and guess which animal has a skull like this. So if you're working at school or with one of your family, I want you to turn and talk to them. Okay, so turn and talk to the person next to you and try and guess which animal this is. If you're on your own, maybe you can just uh, try and guess and write the answer down. Okay, but we want you, you've got 15 seconds to guess which animal at the zoo has a skull like this. Are you ready? Steady? Go. Now you're right, it's a giraffe. A giraffe has a skull like this. Now I think that the ossicones, the things that look like horns at the top, are a bit of a dead giveaway with a giraffe skull. But if you look at it, it's got some interesting things to show. Okay, the eyes are at the side of the head and that helps the giraffe to have a good look around it to keep its eyes open all the time for predators, things like lions out in the wild. Okay, now giraffes, strangely, have only got teeth on the bottom of their jaw at the front. Okay, so they're a little bit different from us. They don't have front teeth on the top. Okay, and they spend a lot of time eating the bark and leaves from trees. Okay, now for the next skull, we've got a good one. This is really challenging. Okay, this is an animal that lives here at the zoo. Okay, so can you guess which animal at the zoo has a skull like this. Now I can tell you that we've got four of these animals here at the zoo, so that's a bit of a clue, okay? And I want you to guess, so turn to the kid next to you. If you're on your own, write your answers down. You've got 15 seconds to say, who has a skull like this? Are you ready? Steady, go. Now, I hope you got the answer, gorilla. Okay, because this is a gorilla skull and we've got four lovely gorillas here at Painton Zoo. Now, gorilla's got an interesting skull. Okay, it looks a lot like ours. If you look, they've got eyes on the front of their head, just like us, so they can keep their eyes focused on a task and they can judge how far away something is. Okay, but they've got big teeth. In fact, their teeth look quite scary. So if you're looking at a gorilla's teeth, they look a little bit more scary than ours. Okay, but remember, this is a vegetarian animal, okay, that lives socially, okay, there's not many predators that would attack a big male gorilla. Okay, but you're right, this is a gorilla skull. And now we've got one of our most amazing skulls in our collection, it's this one, it's very heavy, okay, if you feel the weight of it, very heavy, and I think I can give you a good clue just by opening it like this, okay, it's got a good sized mouth, okay, and a good bite. Now, I think you've probably guessed this one already, but let's give you 15 seconds. Turn to the kid next to you, write your answers down. Three, two, one, go. Now 
You're right, this is a crocodile skull. Okay, I think this is one of the best skulls that we've got. It shows an amazingly big mouth full of very sharp teeth, okay, which would be brilliant for grabbing hold of prey. Okay, but also a crocodile skull helps it in the wild because it can sneak up on its prey. A crocodile skull is very flat, which allows it to sneak up through the water with just its nostrils and its eyes showing, and it can get very close to its prey and then give it a surprise. Okay, now if we look at a skull, that skull can also give us some clues about the life that an animal leads. And importantly, it can help us to guess what food that animal likes to eat. Now, I know this is the skull of a zebra. And here at Painton Zoo, we've got Hartman's Mountain Zebras. Now, you and I know that in the wild, zebras will eat mostly grass. Okay, they spend a lot of time on the plains of Africa, basically grazing grass. And if you look inside their skull, there are some clues that help us to see that. Okay, now zebras have got two types of teeth. So at the front, they've got incisors. Okay, so these teeth at the front are called incisors and they help the zebra to bite the grass. So they can pinch it, okay, between those teeth and then rip it away or they can snip it away with those teeth. And at the back, once they've got the grass into their mouth, these big teeth, these big flat molars, help them to chew the grass into a pulp and that makes it easier to eat. Okay, so zebras have just got the incisors and the molars. They're a herbivore, so they just eat plants. Okay, here at the zoo, we give them uh, hay, and they also get to graze on the grass in their paddock, which they love. Right now, here, we've got the skull of a very different animal. This is the model of a lion skull. And if you look at a lion, they're gonna lead a very different life from a zebra. So we've looked at a herbivore, and now we're gonna look at a carnivore. So from an animal that eats only plants, the zebra, we're gonna look at an animal that eats only meat, which is the carnivore, the lion. Okay, and if you look inside a carnivore's mouth, okay, the teeth are very different indeed. Okay, now importantly, uh, for a lion to grab hold of the prey that it wants to eat, okay, they've got big canines at the front. So they have incisors, and then they have very big canines. Now these canines, are important when they're grabbing hold of prey and crushing the windpipe to kill it. Okay, now uh, a lion is famous for its canines, but there's some other interesting teeth in a carnivore's mouth. At the back, the molars that would normally be used for chewing up the food have been changed shape, and these are called carnassials. Okay, they are used like scissors for cutting away the meat of the prey. Okay, so inside a lion's mouth, they've got gripping teeth and cutting teeth and that helps them in their life as a carnivore. Now we've looked at the skull of a herbivore, a zebra, and a carnivore, a lion. Okay, but we've got one last skull to look at, and that's the skull of an omnivore. Now an omnivore is an animal that eats both plants and animals. Okay, now you might be able to think of some omnivores, but the one I've chosen from here at the zoo is the mandrel. And this is the skull of a big male mandrel. Okay, now they've got quite surprising teeth. If I showed you, okay, if they open their mouth, they have got huge canines. Now, scientists think that these are mostly used for display. They're using, used for uh, scaring other males, but also for scaring predators, things like leopards that might try and hunt mandrels in the forests of Africa. Okay, now those huge canines, okay, can make you think that they're a predator that's gonna be chasing other animals around. But in fact, these are omnivores, so they'll eat mostly fruit, but they'll also things, eat things like leaves and bark and bugs, and maybe a few small mammals and birds. So they're an omnivore, they eat both plants and animals. So if you look inside a mandrel's mouth, you'll see that they've got incisors at the front for cutting, they've got big canines for gripping or for looking scary, and at the back of their mouth, they've got premolars and molars, flat teeth for grinding up their food and making it easy to swallow and easy to digest. Now remember, mandrels are gonna be eating a lot of things like fruit, but also bark and leaves, okay, that need a lot of chewing. Right, now we've looked at herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. We've looked at the teeth inside their mouth. So let's have a look at a human mouth. If you're sitting next to somebody and you can look inside their mouth, now might be a good time to ask them if you can see their teeth. If you're on your own, you're gonna need a mirror to look inside your own mouth and look at your teeth. If you look inside a human mouth, what clues are there in the teeth that would tell you what sort of diet we eat? Now, if you look inside a human mouth, you'll see that we've got incisors, the big flat teeth at the front that help us to take bites out of things. So if you're biting an apple, it helps you to cut into the apple. We've got canines, which are the gripping teeth, the pointy teeth, just at the corners of our mouth. Okay, and at the back of our mouth, we've got our big flat premolars and molars that help us, uh, help us to grind up, to chew up our food into a pulp that's easier to swallow and easier to digest. 
So, if you look at the person next to you's teeth, or if you look at your own teeth in the mirror, what sort of an animal are you? Do your teeth tell you that you're a herbivore, a carnivore, or an omnivore? Now, knowing what an animal eats in the wild helps our keepers here at Paynton to look after the animals correctly, to keep them nice and healthy when they're living here at the zoo. Now, it's important for us to know what the animals eat in the wild, and then that helps us to choose what we're going to feed them here at the zoo, but it's not necessarily exactly the same. Now, we're trying to keep our animals healthy, but we're not trying to give them just the same food as they would get in the wild. And a good example of that would be with our gorillas. If you look at our gorillas in the wild, they've eaten lots and lots of grasses and leaves, okay, maybe the bark from trees and fruit as well. But here at the zoo, we found that if we gave them too much fruit, the fruit that we buy here in the supermarkets, it's too sweet for them. It damages their teeth and it changes the way they behave as well. So here at the zoo, we don't give them fruit, apart from on very special occasions. Most of the time they'll spend eating veg, okay, and things like that. Now another example would be our meerkats. Now our meerkats in the wild in Africa would be eating loads and loads of beetles and grubs and small animals and just a tiny bit of plants occasionally. But here at the zoo we found that if we give them a little bit of meat, okay, and some insects and then also some eggs and some veg, then the vegetables help to keep them healthy. So they'll actually eat carrots and you'd never see a meerkat in the wild eating a carrot. When we know what an animal eats, that can help us to build a food chain. Now a food chain tells us what an animal eats and what animal eats that animal. Okay, now in the wild, we know that zebras like to eat grass, but we also know that lions like to eat zebras. So the grass is eaten by the zebra and the zebra is eaten by a lion. And that's a very simple food chain. Now a food chain always starts with a producer and on land, that's going to be a plant. Okay, now a plant soaks up the rays of the sunshine and turns it into the leaves and bark and fruit that animals can eat. So the producer in the food chain on land will be a plant. In the sea, that might be algae like seaweed, or it might be phytoplankton, so a little bit different. Now, in our simple food chain of a grass being eaten by a zebra, which is eaten by a lion, then the grass is a producer. So the zebra is a consumer in this, okay? And the lion consumes the zebra, so that is also a consumer. The zebra would be the prey, and the lion would be the predator. A predator is an animal that eats other animals. So the lion is a predator and the zebra is the prey animal because it is eaten by the lion. Now if a scientist is drawing a food chain, they will use arrows to show where the energy goes. Now we know that the energy from the sun is soaked up by the grass, okay, and that's used to grow its leaves. And when those leaves are eaten, the energy goes from the grass to the zebra. So there will be an arrow going from the grass to the zebra. And when that zebra is eaten by the lion, then the energy from the grass would go to the zebra, would go to the lion. So the arrows would show where the energy flows. Right now, we've got a bit of a challenge for you. We would like you to build a food chain. So we're gonna start with this, okay? We've got a banana. We've got our lovely Sulawesi crested black macaques, which live here at Paynton Zoo. And we've got one of my favorite animals, which is Lyra, our big reticulated python. Can you arrange these as a food chain? Who would eat who? Oh, you're right, I gave the answer away in the question, didn't I? Okay, the banana would be eaten by the Sulawesi crested black macaque. And in the wild, macaques are eaten by reticulated pythons. So in our food chain, the energy from the sun would be soaked up by the banana plant palm as it grows, producing bananas, which are then eaten by the macaque, which can then be eaten by the reticulated python. So in our food chain, that's the way the energy would flow. So I think you're ready for a more complicated example. Can you arrange these living things into a food chain? We have got a peacock, a Sumatran tiger, a cricket and a leaf. Can you arrange these? Can you draw those into a food chain? So you've got 15 seconds. Turn to the kid next to you. Write the answer down if you're on your own. See if you can arrange those animals, those living things into a food chain.
Right now, in the forests of Asia, the leaves on a plant might well be eaten by an insect, something like a cricket. Now, small bugs need to look out for peacocks because they will be eaten by them. And peacocks need to look out for tigers because the tiger is a big predator and it will eat, happily eat a bird like a peacock. So our food chain would be leaves being eaten by crickets, being eaten by peacocks, being eaten by tigers. Now we've looked at lots of different skulls today from inside the heads of lots of different animals. We've looked at animals that are herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, predator and prey and we've looked at food chains too. Okay but to finish off we've got this amazing skull here. Now if we look inside the mouth of this animal it's got huge teeth okay you can see that the incisors at the front have actually been modified to make tusks okay it's got these huge canines okay which are very sharp and at the back enormous molars as well. Now what animal has a skull like this? I want you to draw me a picture of the animal that you think would have a skull like this or write me a description. Okay now we're going to put the answer for which animal has a skull like this at the end of the description of this video. Okay or if you're watching live we'll put it at the end of the Q&A. Okay but please don't look for the answer until you draw me a picture or written a description of the animal that you think would have an amazing skull like this. Now thank you very much for watching School from the Zoo. We hope you get to come and see us soon here at Paint and Zoo. Cheers.